This is gonna be the best day ever. This is gonna be the best day ever. Just eight short months ago, the Ducati Desert X was launched in Australia. I felt Ducati had come out swinging for its first attempt in what is a very competitive mid-sized adventure twin market. The handling of the bike gelled with me and I felt at home on it, particularly on the dirt. Time moves on and I've continued to test a range of bikes and then out of the blue, a Desert X lands in my garage. Hey mate, how you going? David, good, how are you? Good, good. Good, you got that bike sorted, you're on the Desert X? I'm on the Desert X and uh, yeah, I'm out in the bush and uh, giving it a gut full. I'd be interested to see if you can do a bit of a fuel economy run on or a distance run and yep. see what sort of range you think you can get. Yeah, so, so you're not sure where we're going, but range is important, you're telling me. Mm, yeah, so uh, <laughs> just, just have a bit of a test, see how far you think you might be able to get out of those two tanks. Okay. And uh, got a little mission plan for you. All right, and seat time, I need to get a bit of seat time on it. Indeed, get dialed in. All right, okay. Well, as soon as you can tell me, I look forward to knowing where we're going. All right, we'll enjoy. I'll be in touch next week. All right, thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Considering how long I've been riding, you'd think that nothing would surprise me. And then my old mate Nick Selleck comes along, and in his new role with Ducati, pops a Desert X in my garage and says, we're going on an adventure. Not sure where yet, but start getting prepared. Nick and I go back over 10 years, and most recently we had a lot of fun testing multi-stratas in the dirt. Now, that was a real hoot, and for those unfamiliar, Here's a little sample of what we got up to. Nick Selleck from Ducati. This is it, hit it, hit it, this is it. It's pretty clear Nick has a decent adventure on his mind. He's told me to check real world fuel range with the extended tanks, experiment with soft luggage options, and get a heap of seat time. Well, I'm up for that. And I look forward to hearing about where we're gonna go. I've punched out a couple of 400 kilometer days, and this has been valuable in dialing me back into the handling and tech on the Ducati. So Nick's asked me to reacquaint myself with the Desert X. And the first thing that comes to mind is the second you sit on it, it's got quite a low seat height, so my feet are just about flat on the ground. So that's the first thing. The other thing is this is a traditional adventure bike shape. So you actually sit in it rather than on it. And so that means the handlebars are up a little bit higher. And you know, the seated position on this is excellent, but equally as importantly for me, now I'm 178 centimeters tall, which is about five foot 10 in the old money for our American friends. When I'm standing on this bike, it's just so comfortable. The pegs are nice and wide. The foot brake can be lifted for dirt or street, and that works beautifully. But the actual standing position is excellent for dirt, and I'm really happy with it. The second I get on the bike in the dirt, I feel at home. It has a stability to it. So Kyle, where you all come up to fuel transfer. So, yep. so what happens? This comes on. Yep. So yeah. up, up in the top menu there. Yeah. Um, so that, that menu, just to give you some navigation, it's your yeah. settings menu. You've got a chronograph. Yeah, yeah. And then your fuel transfer. So it, it's now highlighted white, so it's available. Yes. Um, and we can transfer fuel. Right. So how do you transfer so fuel? So it should be just on our mode, enter switch. Yeah. We're already highlighted in that, that menu option. Yeah. And it should be... Fuel transfer. Fuel transfer, yes. 
And that's it. And that's it. It's transferring oh. now. I can hear it. Yep. Yeah. It's pumping. It's pumping. You're filling up. <laughs> and I'm not even having to open a fuel cap. No. It's fantastic. Got to be happy with that. Well, mine will go on before I get home. Yep, definitely. Okay, time to get in the dirt. Time to watch this fuel economy change. <laughs> Into the mountains. This is a great little climb, this first one. Going up. So Nick gave me a really simple task, or so it seemed. Find the fuel range of this bike. Include the big tank and the auxiliary tanks of 8 litres. Combined fuel capacity of 29 litres. So I punched out in the last couple of days 800 k's. Now when I go on the freeway, the fuel usage on this bike drops to about 4.7 litres per 100 kilometres. But when you get in the dirt, obviously it goes up. So I'm going to give Nick a guesstimate. And I'm going to say the fuel usage on this bike in the dirt, provided you don't go too hard on the throttle, is 5.3 litres per 100 k's. So what will that give us? That'll give us a theoretical range of around 530, 540 kilometres. Now there's one thing missing in this equation, and that is that that's theoretical. What we don't know, or what I don't know, is where the fuel pickup is on the fuel pump. Does it drain the whole, all the fuel completely, or is there a little bit less? So, to be on the safe side, I'm going to give it 500 k's. Now, for those Desert X owners out there with auxiliary fuel tanks, help me out. What sort of fuel range are you getting in the dirt? I'm particularly interested in how deep sand affects fuel economy. When I was riding with Kyle, I checked out his soft luggage solution and we had a chat. All right, yeah, so you've gone with this uh, Krieger pack hanging off the front of the tanks. Yeah. Okay. So a nice flat surface there on the front of the tanks. It, like, it doesn't impede on my cockpit too much. Um, yeah. It gives me enough room to get back. I still get my bum over those corners of the um, yeah the uh, the pack there the packs there if I need to get back yeah. on the on the seat. But um, yeah, you know it's a compromise. And here is that to me seems a bit high. Yeah, it's I just picked that up yesterday to be honest. I'm um, just looking for something to fit. A bit yeah, more come on, Kyle, gear. tell me if it's too high. I I think it is. It just it's, yeah. I, I can't. It, I just feel it on. You know, maybe if I lost a bit of weight, it wouldn't feel it on my belly, but. I feel it on the guts as I lean forward and no. sort of get in that attack position. So. That's about the um, Fandango Pro in the giant loop yep. ones. That's about a Fandango Pro size. Yeah. Um, Diablo is about there. Another task Nick gave me was to explore soft luggage options. Now, earlier in the week, we bumped into Kyle and you saw his options. And, you know, he's basically having the soft luggage here and forward. The only thing I don't like about that is that it squashes the cockpit of the bike where you're moving your legs. Uh, but anyway, as you know, I'm supported by Giant Loop and have been for a million years. And I think I've got a Giant Loop solution that will work well. I'd be turning to uh, these Siskiyou panniers and I'd put them straight over the fuel tanks. Now Siskiyou panniers, are, they've got lots of Velcro adjustability to get them absolutely sitting right. But there you've got like a pannier style. Yeah, it's reasonably wide. It's probably, when you look at the side of the, the handlebars, it's probably, you know, about that far each side wider than the handlebar. But the advantage of it is that it keeps the, the cockpit where your legs are nice and clear. And it keeps the, the weight low. And uh, I'm quite happy with that. I think that would do me. And then what I do if, if we're going to camp and I need a little bit more 
uh, capacity I'd have a double ended Tillamook dry bag on the top and I think that's my solution and with that amount of luggage honestly I could do around the world or on that that's that stacks of volume now in terms of tank bags the one that I prefer is the Fandango Pro but on this because the tank is fairly high profile and you sit low that that gets in the road I'm not really happy about that what I would do is go for the um, Diablo tank bag it's a lot smaller more compact you can move it forward and I, I think that'd be the go this is gonna be the best day ever well Project X is underway and I look forward to presenting a cracking adventure movie in the not too distant future now for those that want more Desert X goodness, click the link in the top right hand corner and that will take you to my Desert X and Multi Strata Dirt Tests. And those with a thirst for the Desert X not quenched, stay watching to hear Kyle discuss his long term experience with his bike. And if you think what we do is good stuff, subscribe, it's just a click away. Oh, Roger, it looks like it's a bit of a small Ducati gathering. Du Desert X. It's, what are they called? Um, Ducatiisti? Ducatiisti? Ducatiisti. Is that what we're called? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, a, a, it's a gaggle. A gaggle? It's not quite a gaggle, I don't think. <laughs> so you've heard about my Project X and not knowing very much. Now, you've been a Ducati Desert X owner for how long? Uh, since September of last year. Right. Yeah. So what's your experience been? Um, lots of little local trips. Um, did a trip down to Phillip Island, down through the Barry Way and some of that Victorian high country. Um, sort of detoured through there a bit um, back in October. Um, yeah, and um, been on a couple of shoots with you, Dave, out to the bridal track and taking the Desert X out there. Um, so nice, varied, um, varied sort of terrain on, the, on, on it so far. So how many Ks have you, have you knocked out? Um, I'm embarrassed to say, but at 7,000, yeah. Oh, well, 7,000's all right. Yeah, I, I thought I'd have a bit more, but, you know. Yeah. So tell me, you know, what was the motivation to buying the Desert X? I'm... You're going to declare something, aren't you? Yeah, no, I'm a Ducati fan. I, you know, there's Ducati only parking in my garage. <laughs> trying to clear out some of the orange that got in there. Oh, right. But, um, yeah, I came off a 790. Um, I, like I said, Ducati fan, I've been watching the development of this bike for, for many years. I've got a Ducati um, Desert Sled, which is, when they, they did the prototype, they based the bike off that Ducati Scrambler. Um, so it's been, I've been waiting and watching and, and, and waiting for that time for it to come out. And when it did, I, you know, very hard decision to go away from the 790 because it was such a good bike you know it's it was sort of a benchmark bike for a long time there um but having a chat with nick Selick, being formerly a ktm man um he assured me that it'd be okay yeah so your experience on the dirt and the and the road on the bike you seem to be um clipping along at a fair pace yeah so um that's i think that's what's doing it for me on this bike at the moment is the dirt and the road. The KTM was a great dirt bike, but geez, it could be a bit diabolical on the road, especially when you throw a really big knobbly tire on the front. It was just, you know, didn't have a whole lot of front end feel. This thing, different animal, um, really, really bridges those two gaps really well. So yeah, um, done some road Ks, done some dirt Ks, and you know, it's just, you, at the end of the day, you're not tired. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I lean more to, I started my riding on road, like as probably lots of people do, and transitioned about 10 years ago onto the, onto the adventure scene on dirt bikes and, and whatnot. Um, and, and here we are now with this, this style of, you know, par or not a parallel twin, it's an it's a L twin in the Ducati, but. Um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. start that again, it's not going well with that. All right, now, God, could it be any louder? While it's doing that, I'll just get a couple of cutaways. Look at this. Kyle Roger, there he is. Give us a thumbs up, Kyle. <laughs> All right.
So what attracted you to the, to the Desert X and, and how have you found it? Um, yeah, look, my attraction to the Desert X is purely one of, um, of brand loyalty, I suppose, <laughs> um, because it is a Ducati. Um, but I, I am, I'm really happy with it. That, you know, don't get me wrong, there's things that could be better. Um, it's Ducati's first crack at a proper adventure bike and you know there's a few there's a few holes but they they they're working with the owners to 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 come up with solutions you know I'm speaking with some guys at the Ducati Ride Experience Adventure Academy last week who um, have issues and they're working with Ducati like head office is speaking to them and and trying to work out solutions so yeah, you know, little things that aren't too concerning. There's a couple of issues around suspension in the rear with tyres hitting flaps and things. But, um, yeah, I, I, on a whole, I love it. Yeah, it's, it's... It's a very... I mean, what, what I found, and I ride a truckload of bikes, as you know, it it's a very confidence-inspiring bike on both dirt and tar. Yes, yeah, like It definitely. seems very planted and predictable in how it handles. Definitely. I think... Um, I think for me that translates into a more relaxed ride. Um, I find at the end of the day, I can do a big day on the Desert X and I'm not as worn out, you know, um, because it is, it's predictable, it feels comfortable, it feels at home. I've had a Tenere prior, I've had the 790, I've had DR650s, um, and, and it just, it works. The ergonomics are good, um, the way it, the, the trail feels good, the way it, brakes traction's good it's all controllable it just doesn't get you out of your comfort zone too hard it's a traditional adventure bike in that you sit in it yes yeah Yeah. tell me about that how do you find that does it protect you or yeah um look there's lots of talk about buffeting with your windscreen um i'm a short guy so i don't have too much of those issues but yeah i sit in it um it was a little bit strange to get used to after the ktm because you sit on top of those um, you're very much very dirt bike style of, of position, but yeah, sitting in this one, um, you know, um, ground touching the ground. Like I said, I'm short. I can get my feet to the ground. Not 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 flat foot by a long stretch, but um, it's very narrow through the middle. Um, it's a narrow bike. Um, when you look at it from where you are now, it looks like a big elephant. Hence, yeah, you know, its predecessor. It does. It does look like that, doesn't it? It's like got a big front on it. Yeah. But when you're on it, it doesn't feel like that at all, does nah, it? No, no. Very, very narrow between your legs. Um, really able to grip that, 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 that tank in the seat with your knees and, and get one with a bike. But, yeah, I, it's outstanding. Outstanding. So, Project X. And Nick Sellig's given me a task. Find out the fuel range with the extra tanks. Now, you've got the extra tanks, Kyle. Tell me the fuel range. I, I can't. What? I haven't actually emptied them yet. Um, I just haven't had that opportunity to get on one of those multi-day rides where you you really want to push it. Um, I, I'm interested to know, Dave, so please tell me when you find out. <laughs> this is disgraceful. It's disgraceful, I, I know. Mm. Uh, it's, they actually fuel in there now that I didn't know I had. I thought I'd emptied it and transferred it to the front. And I'm a bit funny about weight on the back of the bike and... I had you, eight kilos of fuel on the back. You know the funny thing, I've had experience, I've had a couple of bikes with front and rear tanks, and the beauty of it is it uh, just um, stabilises the bike. You don't even know you're carrying extra fuel, and it's really well balanced. Yep. And that's probably, that's why you don't even know whether it's full or empty. Well, or I guess it's a testament, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah, certainly when you find out, let me know. All right. I'll do my best in the meantime to work it out. Well, I'm well on the way today. I'm, I'm probably I'm, I'm I'm working through that first tank, which is which is big enough. How many liters is this first tank on? Twenty one. Twenty one. Right. Well, I'm kind of going through that, and then I still got to do all that rest. <laughs> all right. Well, we better get to work. Do you um do you want to just maybe explain how it works with the transfer of the yeah, fuel? Yeah, yeah. You can. That'd be a good idea. Tell us how it works. So. The fuel, front fuel tank, your, your primary tank, once it gets down to a point, I think it's around quarter of a tank or just below, Yeah. an option that opens up on your menu on your um, LCD display yeah. to transfer fuel to the front. Now, 
whether that's ideal situation or not, um, it's yet to be yet to be seen. But um, you've got to wait till you've used that fuel. You can't sort of just use eight litres and then transfer it. So it, it, it the bike prompts you when it's ready. All oh, right, and you just got to transfer the whole lot in one yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing that ex- or feeling that experience and seeing it happen. Yeah. So anyway, we better get out there. Yep. Um, I've got to get some more seat time. Well, thanks for talking to us, mate. Now, no one problems. more question. That's a lovely red seat. Yes. How come you've got a red seat and Cause, I don't? Because it's red. All oh, right. <laughs> and it's Ducati. It's got to be. You've got to have a bit of red there. <laughs> no, nah, it's great. Get, you can get a bit further back and it's um, yeah, no, less more com- no, no less comfortable. It's, it's just as comfy. It's just flash. Just flash, yeah. Yeah. I'm all about the style. Yeah, good on you. <laughs> well, there he is, Kyle Roger. And he's been doing a few, doing an adventure academy there, I noticed, too. All right, let's get out there. Let's do it. Come on, Krieger. No, no, it's a giant loop, giant loop. <laughs> Krieger's done that. <laughs> Kyle's not sponsored by anyone. No, I'm not sponsored by he anyone. He has to buy it with hard, cold cash. <laughs> Dave's been supported by Giant Loop, I think, for 13 years. I'm one of his longest... Brand ambassadors. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the to be paid forward, you know. I'm just I'm clinging <laughs> on. <laughs> the um yeah, yeah pensioner, I'll be buried in giant loop. I'll be buried in a giant loop bag. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get going. Thanks.